Hi friends, a very warm welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to see the childhood days of our Krishna Murti, popularly known as Kalki. So let's move towards the story. So this is the first issue of the Gokulam, which was published in the year 1988. So Kalki was known as <clears throat> our Krishna Murti and popularly called as Kalki. He was a very close friend of C. Rajagopalachari, that is Rajaji. Like Rajaji, he too was a versatile man, a pioneer in the field of journalism, and a novelist and a social reformer, an art critic and a lover of children. So let's move towards the story. In a little corner of Tamil Nadu, there is a tiny village called Budavangalam on the banks of the river Kaveri. Another little village called Manaimed is close by. The villages are both in the district of Tanjore. It was in Budamangalam that I was born. My father was Ramasami Ayar. He was respected and liked by everyone in our village. He was an accountant of sorts. He would go to Manal Medu to help the headman with the village accounts. Our house was called the accountant's house. My father was a pious man. He was blessed with a strong voice, rich and clear as a bell. Evenings were the best part of the day. My father would come home after a hard day's work, first on the fields and then in the accounting desk. He would sit on the cool stone ledge outside our house and sing. No sooner was his voice heard than the villagers gathered outside our house. They would sit around and listen with great pleasure. The songs he sang had moved and beautiful lyrics, had moving and beautiful lyrics. He would often intersperse them with the stories from the Ramayana and Mahabharata and readings from the great Tamil literary works. Most people who enjoyed these were impromptu musical discourses would call my father Bhagavadar or Punnu Ayer, which means a man with a heart of gold. These music sessions became a tradition. My father would always end the evening with one particular song. When he sang the last song, a strange fervor would come over me. I would tie bells on my feet and take the burning oil lamp in my hands and start dancing. My brother Venkatraman and I were inseparable. I always called him Anna, which meant elder brother. He was just six when my father began to teach him to sing Asthapadis, Bhajans and Namwalis, famous verses in the praise of God. I was just three, but I would run to join in the music lesson. A gentleman named Swaminatha Iyer had a school in Manalmed. The school was in the village hall by the pond. Both my brother and I were enrolled in the school. Swaminatha Iyer was my first teacher. He taught me to read and write. I was about six years old at the time. One day, something rather horrid happened. We had recited our tables and Swaminatha Iyer had said the children could take a short break. I dragged my brother to the pond and I waded in. Hearing the twittering of birds and the flapping of wings looked up. My foot slipped and I plunged head first into the deep water. Oh, oh, shouted my brother and just jumped in straight after me. An old woman who was washing her clothes by the pond raised her alarm. Our teacher ran out of the school and pulled us out of the water with the help of other villagers. Within just a few minutes, the news of our adventure had reached our parents. They rushed to see if we were all right. We were held close and prayers were said. They even wept with joy and relief to see us safe. I will never forget this experience. It left a deep impression on my mind. When I was eight years old, my brother and I were invested with a sacred thread. We had to learn several Sanskrit verses by heart. I had a good memory and found it easy. My brother was very impressed. He often remarked on it. There is a very important section of the Yajurveda called the Rudrajapam. I learnt it by heart. When any special puja to Lord Shiva was performed in our village temple, I was called to recite it. I was delighted and recited the Rudram with great enthusiasm. At about this time, a gentleman called 
Ayya Swami Ayer and his wife moved into the house next to ours. They did not have any children. Soon Ayya Swami Ayer took charge of our school. He named it, renamed it Pandurangan School. We called him Sir. Sir was very popular. He would offer sugar candy as a reward to anyone who could recite three verses from memory. If no one could, the candy would be distributed to all the children. Within a few months, our father died. We were plunged into grief. Our teacher, Ayaswami Ayer, comforted us. I have no children. Now you are like my son. You are Rama and Lakshmana, he said. I worked very hard at my studies. Sir taught us Tamil, mathematics, history and geography. He had many books. His books were his wealth. He would lend his books to us to read. Ayya Swami Ayer often called me Agastya. I was short like great Rishi and also good at Tamil. He would sometimes call me Rajappa, which was his loving pet name for Sri Krishna. He would call to me through the window in the wall between our two houses and give me Prashad. He would laughingly call me a bookworm because I always used to read books. I love to read. I used to read even while walking in the street. One day, my mother sent me to buy betel leaves. I put the packet on my hand and come home lost in my book. When I reached for the packet, there was nothing in my hand. By this time, I had already read most of the sir's books. Besides Tamil books, I had read Edwin Arnold's Light of Asia, the works of Paramahamsa, Swami Vivekananda and Meher Baba. It was only in the later years that I regretted the neglect of my body for the sake of my mind. I hated games. Sometimes my brother would drag me outside to join in. I enjoyed, almost preferred my own company. I would stare for hours at a field of paddy. No sight was more beautiful. The wind would ripple through the tender green grain, making it look like a mossy sea. I was never frightened of the dark. I would go to the river after sundown. The stars would twinkle in the sky. Glowworms shone through the darkness. I used to think up strange stories sitting there. My brother and I never missed a single music concert of or Harikata, musical discourse in the vicinity. After we returned, we would stage our own show. The villagers loved it. We came to be known as the Buddha Mangalam brothers and often gave programs. The earliest Tamil novels were written at that time. Kupuswami Madhuliyar and Durasami Ayangar wrote novels which I read and thoroughly enjoyed. I was always on the lookout for a good novel. Once a gentleman who came to the village brought a detective novel with him. I sat beside him and waited until he had finished. I borrowed it and read it by the light of a chimney lamp, almost forgetting to breathe. It was nearly 3 am when I went up to bed. I wouldn't mind being marooned or uninhabited island like Robinson Crusoe as long as I had some books. I used to say, I also had the habit of changing the stories to suit me. There was a great poet called Bhardiyar in Tamil Nadu. I first read his poems when I was 10 years old. Since then, hardly a day passes when I don't sing or hear one of his poems. I discovered the pleasure of reading ancient Tamil poetry written by Saivaite and Vaishnavite science. There were only five classes in the Pandurangan school. My brother and I went to Mayuram, the nearest town, to further our education. We stayed with an old lady and studied in the municipal school. Though there were no school fees, we had to pay the old lady for feeding us. Our family could not afford it. My brother went home after a few months and before the year was out, I too returned to Buddha Mangalam. At home, I helped my brother with the accounts. My handwriting was good and I usually never made mistakes in maths. When I was 17 years old, my aunt came to Buddha Mangalam and everyone was keen that I should resume my schooling. My aunt said that she would take me with her to Trichrapalli, where she lived. If my brother could pay the school fees, my family thought 
it was a good idea. I was reluctant. My classmates were in college and I had to join the 8th standard. I felt embarrassed and awkward. My family persuaded me that I did not look 17 and that no one would laugh. Everyone knew of our financial constraints after all. And so I went to Trichy. I joined the Hindu senior secondary school. The week I joined were asked to write an essay on Vivekananda's life and work. To my astonishment, my essay was read out in the class. That year, I worked hard and got good marks. On merit, I was awarded a full scholarship to study in the Trichy National School. I had even got free accommodation. I was thrilled because I would not be a burden to the family anymore. The three years I spent at the Trichy National School was were the extreme pleasant ones. And so, my childhood years fled past. My life took a fresh turn when I joined the non-cooperation movement. I left school to serve my country. So this was the story published in the Gokulam magazine on the childhood of R. Krishnamurti, popularly known as Kalki. Till I come back with a new video and a new episode and a new story. Till then stay safe and take care. This is Chandamama signing off.